dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good morning, I'm Taylor Upchurch. Today is Sunday, May 5th. Yesterday was a busy derby day across the bluegrass from Churchill Downs to Keeneland. Olivia Russell has more on the celebration that took place in Lexington. A packed racetrack for this year's Kentucky Derby. You cannot come to Kentucky without coming to Keeneland. We are everything horse racing and so we love to be a part of the derby experience, which is, you know, the best two minutes in sports. But here at Keeneland, the attention was on the screens, not the track. Even though there aren't any horses racing here today, fans are still able to get up on the rail and cheer for their favorite horses. People are looking at the scoreboard and everything, and they're obviously enjoying everything that's here. Fans cheered as maximum security crossed the finish line first. But making Derby history, the horse that crossed first wasn't declared the official winner, and Country House trotted away with the roses. So now yeah. everyone's in an uproar. It's Wondering like some divided. people are happy, some people are sad about What's it. That? Fans say it's called the Kentucky Derby. So whether you're in Louisville or Lexington, you're still part of 145 years of tradition. The state as a whole is behind horse racing. So at either location you go, it's going to be enthusiastic, it's going to be exciting. And while the rain was a challenge for some, it didn't stop true racing fans. Rain doesn't stop anyone in Kentucky. We are ride or die fans. In Lexington, Olivia Russell, WKYT. This was the 145th Kentucky Derby. And now let's check in with meteorologist Shane Smith for a look at your forecast this morning. Shane, like you said earlier, it's awfully wet out there, but there's something to look forward to at the end of the day. Uh, there is. We're going to transition from more steady rain to isolated showers. We may even see a few peaks of sunshine today. Uh, just not right now. Here's a look at the weather cam down at the Weather Service office in Jackson. Still a lot of clouds, still a little fog. So a little bit of rain out there, but you can see clearing out near the I-75 corridor, at least the rain is moving out and we will see those showers continue to lift off to the east and northeast over the next few hours. That flash flood watch will be wrapping up here in about an hour and 20 minutes for the counties highlighted in green. I think we're going to avoid widespread high water problems, but once again, can't rule out a few isolated trouble spots. 57 currently Jackson, Hazard, Peaburg, 58 Pikeville. Good morning, Jonesville. You're at 63. Same story down in Middlesbrough. We're going to be going into the mid 60s for highs today, but notice those temperatures are going to fluctuate a bit in the afternoon. That's because we're going to see a northwest wind kick in. That's going to bring in a few more showers and a little bit of cooler air, but warmer weather is on the way and some drier days are ahead. We'll talk about how long this dry spell will last coming up here in just a few minutes. That's certainly good news, Shane. Many people and horses stayed for the entire annual Knott County Trail Ride. For the past several days, riders enjoyed the scenic views that the Knott County Mountain Trails have to offer. Trail rides, merchandise booths, and concession stands, as well as several concerts, all took place. Hey, it's a great place to come, bring your kids, wives, and just good trail riding, good clean fun. The trail ride takes place in the spring and fall each year. Eastern Kentucky musician Tyler Booth performed last night following other artists. And on Thursday, West Virginia officials announced a lawsuit was settled against the opioid distributor McKesson for $37 million. Senator Joe Manchin says the suit is a long time coming. I uncovered this last year and I brought it up to their, everybody's attention last October. They denied it. They said no negotiations, no talks, no settlements, and they thought basically just dismissed the whole thing. Well, do they think I just made up the figure of 35 million? We knew what they were trying to settle for. We knew what they were trying to do. It was horrible then, it's horrific today to think that they would sell out the state of West Virginia. Governor Jim Justice reportedly said he wanted more money from McKesson, which made more than $2 billion last year. West Virginia has the country's highest opioid overdose rate. 
And in Breathitt County, firefighters burned down an old building for training yesterday. It was part of a live burn exercise. People driving on Kentucky 15 near Jiffy Mart might have caught the glimpse of the exercise. The training lines up with International Firefighters Day, which is observed on May 4th because of five Australian firefighters who died in a fire in 1999. And one body has been recovered and two employees are still missing after an explosion rocked a silicone plant in Illinois just before 10 p.m. Friday night. Emergency crews in Waukegan suspended the search for the missing employees due to the hazardous material and the structural integrity of the building. Officials say it's unlikely the missing people survived the explosion. It's not known at this time where the body was found and officials are working with the site owner to secure the site. I live about 20 miles north in Kenosha, on the north side of Kenosha, and I was sitting watching TV downstairs and heard the windows shake in the house and asked my wife, did you feel that too? Four people were transported to local hospitals. Officials said nine people were in the building at the time of the explosion. And switching gears back to eastern Kentucky, a free dental bus came to Floyd County to help those who could not afford proper dental care. WYMT's Lauren McCourt talked with volunteers who say seeing people walk out with a better smile makes it all worth it. Going to the dentist is a necessity. There are many people who need care and are unable to get to it. But for some, it can be too expensive. Dentist is something that is very expensive and it's not covered. A lot of people can't afford dental care. So God's Appalachian Partnership teamed up with North American Mission Board to bring the dentist to town. We're just offering this free dental clinic for any of those who just need it in our area. The planning started long before the bus stopped here. We've been waiting for a whole year. We planned it actually last April. Dr. Valentine is one of the many volunteers who donated his time to help the people of Eastern Kentucky. The Lord. Uh, wants us to help others. Traveling from Versailles, he helped more than 60 patients. Favorite part about this is knowing that those people uh, are receiving care uh, that they wouldn't otherwise be able to get. Without getting paid a dime. That's a way that I can give back my talents and my experience in helping others. Dr. Valentine not only is helping fix teeth and making lasting smiles. Tell them what uh, how the Lord can bless them. But hopefully someone's heart. In Floyd County, Lauren McCourt, WIMT Mountain News. Oh, Morris says that he hopes to have the dental bus back again in the near future. And although more than 44 million American adults have a mental health condition, many more go undiagnosed. In honor of National Mental Health Awareness Month, the Coal Run Lions Club hosted a walk and talk event. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, 18% of adults in the United States have a mental health condition. Psychiatrist Dr. Jay Narola says any mental conditions should be treated like any other illness. People don't want to consider mental health as a medical illness. This is the medical illness just like people suffer from diabetes, high blood pressure. Organizers say events like this help open the conversation about mental health conditions. Mental health conditions are the leading cause of disability in the United States. If you think you may have a mental health condition, you can call 1-800-662-4357. And one family is now admitting to paying $6.5 million to get their daughter into college. It's part of the same admission scam that ensnared Lori Lawlin and Felicity Huffman. But this family says they're victims who thought the process was legitimate. Federal authorities say the $6.5 million is the largest amount of money anyone admitted to paying college admission scam artist Rick Singer. The money came from a Chinese pharmaceutical billionaire who was trying to get his daughter into Stanford. And YouTube now has 2 billion monthly users. The Google-owned video giant continues to boost its living room footprint. Watch time of YouTube on TV screens was more than 250 million hours per day as of March 2019, according to the company. That's an increase of 39 percent in less than a year and excludes viewing on YouTube TV, Google's Internet pay TV service. And attention chicken lovers, there are frozen purchases you should keep an eye on. Tyson recalled nearly 12 million pounds of chicken strips because they might contain metal. Tyson is expanding its recall of frozen ready-to-eat chicken strips products that were shipped nationwide. More than 69,000 pounds were included when recall was first issued. 
In March, U.S. Department of Agriculture's Food Safety and Inspection Service says. Latest recall includes products produced from October 1st through March 8th and have use-by dates of October 1st, 2019 through March 7th, 2020. Coming up on Mountain News this morning, CBS Jill's Sle Jill Schlesinger has a guide to investigator or investor greed prevention. A few more rounds of showers are on the way today, but some warmer and drier weather is not far away. A detailed look at the forecast right after this.